Hello and welcome to CIS 210 Computer Hardware. Welcome to the Fall 2020 edition of this class. Uh, what follows is going to be a brief introduction into what you can expect from your course for the next eight weeks. Uh, but trust me, it will go very quickly. Uh, we do need to make sure that we get off to a quick start, which is the purpose of this brief introduction. So without further delay, let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, who am I? Well, my name is uh, Rick Kazaya, and uh, I've been teaching at Wesleyan for a number of years. I've been an adjunct since 2012. I also teach for Wake Technical Community College and East Coast uh, Polytechnic University, better known as ECPI University. Uh, I live in Wake Forest, North Carolina, which is just north of Raleigh. And I'm currently uh, working for Lenovo Corporation full time as a senior technical account manager uh, for our data center group. The, I've been a lifelong resident of North Carolina. I'm also, uh, while I'm thinking about it, a Wesleyan graduate. But uh, I've been with Lenovo IBM since uh, the mid 90s and have a long history in uh, server technology. Uh, I hold graduate degrees from NC State and East Carolina University, and one of these days I hope to finish up my PhD. So anyway, that's a very quick introduction about me. Uh, we'll have some more time to get to know each other in the discussion forum for this week. There is an assignment posted there that you all need to participate in. Uh, that is a brief introduction just so I can, can know a little bit more about you. So. With that said, let's go ahead and jump to the uh, to the rest of this introduction. So CIS 210 is a fast paced course. It's an eight week accelerated class. And before COVID came along, it was unusual that uh, that this class or that we has it have as many classes online as we do. Now it's the new normal. So Hopefully this is not your first experience with an online class. If it is, uh, I would suggest that you work ahead whenever possible, ask questions, and uh, you know, try to anticipate uh, any sort of uh, interruptions you might have if you know that you've got some sort of uh, work obligation that may interfere with your ability to do something in week, week three, for example. Uh, please let me know ahead of time so that you're not penalized and, and we don't lose traction. Uh, these assignments can stack up very, very quickly. Uh, eight weeks does race by. So. Uh, something else that's unique about this course is that we have activities that you must complete in two different platforms. One platform you're likely familiar with, that's something called Genzibar. Uh, that's the, the normal Wesleyan uh, student portal. The other one you may not be familiar with, and that's something called MindTap. MindTap is a platform uh, built and maintained uh, by our textbook publisher, Cengage. Uh, it is required for this class. So if you don't currently have a Cengage code, you need to buy one. I will hand out course keys, but course keys are not the same thing as uh, the, the Cengage code to allow you access to the material. So you need the Cengage code to access the material, then you need my course key in order to be able to enter the right course. So if you have any questions about that, please send me an email. Uh, time is of the essence, though. I'm hoping that you already have your textbook, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. So each week, again, this, I realize this is a lot of material, but eight weeks is an accelerated uh, platform. Each week, you will cover two or three chapters. That means that you'll have assignments due in two or three separate chapters, as in a chapter in for uh, sorry, a chapter quiz for each chapter we're responsible for. Week one starts with two chapters, uh, then week two, and for most of the chapters or most of the weeks thereafter, we'll have three chapter quizzes each week. So, uh, chapter quizzes each week, two or three, uh, plus. Uh, contributing to the discussion forum. Now, let me go ahead and cut to the chase on that. I know that, uh, well, let me say it this way. Historically, students have not responded well to the discussion forum. Uh, they may feel a little awkward, perhaps it's a little shy. Uh, I, I, you know, there are various reasons for not contributing to the discussion forum. But I will tell you that in this course, uh, it is required 
the discussion forum takes place of your in-person attendance. Uh, this first week, for example, if you don't submit your introductory comments in the discussion forum to more or less say, hi, I'm here, then you'll be counted as absent. Uh, that's reported on Friday. This only replies to the first week, but, but that will be reported on Friday. So if you're reported absent on Friday, you will most likely be dropped from the course. So attendance is very important. The discussion board uh, is the, the, the is what represents your attendance. So please don't make the mistake of completing all of your other assignments flawlessly and then overlooking or neglecting to spend time on the, on the discussion forum. Typically the discussion forum is uh, you know, something that uh, would be considered water cooler talk. You know, the sort of chatter you might have in a classroom. I do think it's an important piece of what we do here. Uh, and for that matter, I think that uh, as closely as uh, we can mimic the seated classroom experience, um, we should we should do that, right? I think that having uh, live in-person classes is, uh, especially for this material, probably the better model. And absent that, we have to do the best we can. So uh, one of those tools that we're going to use to try to close that gap between in-person and online classes is the discussion forum. So again, please contribute to it. Um, I'll try to make the topics interesting and uh, worth your time. So uh, beyond that, um, we have uh, exercises, as I said previously, that you'll have to complete in Genzibar and MindTap. This first week, you'll have quizzes to complete in both formats, right, in both tools. So uh, uh, week two and going forward, we'll probably change that a bit, but I anticipate that some of you will not have your MindTap uh, license this week and or your textbook. So trying to make allowances for those that are not fully prepared. If you have questions about that, please send me an email and we can discuss what to do next. Here is what your textbook looks like. Notice this is the A plus guide to IT technical support, the ninth edition. Uh, you can get this book in a number of formats. Uh, you know, for, I prefer to purchase textbooks. I know that you can also rent them uh, and you can get them electronic only, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but me personally, I like to have the textbook. And if you are planning to take the, um, the, the certification exam, that goes with this textbook, in other words, you're planning to sit for the A plus, the CompTIA A plus exam, then it's another really good reason to, to plan to purchase this book. Uh, the, the material here is uh, very comprehensive. And unlike some of the other textbooks that we use uh, at uh, Wesleyan, this one will go a long way toward preparing you for the actual certification exam. Um, if that's not your objective, well, uh, you know, me personally, if you're going to be a technologist, I think that it's always good to have your, your personal IT library. Um, but of course, that decision is yours. If you are starting this class without your textbook, it's day one, it's Monday, and you don't have your course, your, your textbook, that is your number one objective. Please do anything and everything you can to get your textbook and your MindTap course code. If you're going to purchase the bundle through the bookstore, you'll be in good shape because you'll have both your, your MindTap access code as well as the textbook. If you decide to purchase the textbook elsewhere through Amazon, for example, then you're still respons responsible for purchasing the course code. Uh, you can purchase it directly from, from Cengage, for example, but you must have the code, right? There's no way around it. Uh, it is something that's integral to, uh, to your study in this class. Next slide. Next slide. All right, so assignments for week one. Uh, you should have your textbook. I guess we've covered that pretty well already. Once you have your textbook, you must go ahead and create your MindTap account. Now, if you already have a MindTap account, you're in good shape. Uh, you don't need to create a new one for a new textbook. Uh, what you will need to do instead is make sure that you enter in the proper Cengage code and uh, once you are uh, able to access the materials for this textbook, then you'll add our course key, which will add you to my classroom. Um, if you're unfamiliar with how to do that, please uh, let me know and I'll see if I can help you. 
but the uh, first step is of course to to get that uh, that Cengage key uh, and again if you are still looking to purchase a textbook I'd make your life a, uh, if I were you I'd try to make things a little simpler go ahead and purchase the bundle it is slightly cheaper than buying them individually uh, and you will get them at the same time uh, once you've created your MindTap account uh, you'll need to, to log in uh, and view uh, the there are two sections that kind of a getting started section with uh, within the tool and that is getting started with MindTap and the course readiness resources tab those are two separate tabs within MindTap again once you get the, the your access uh, set up you'll see those at the top of my class uh, you need to complete both of those now this is for your awareness just so that you can properly navigate to the course they are not graded but I would highly recommend that you spend some time to get to know this tool and that you you know build some experience points uh, with this particular platform um, it's uh, fairly complex right there are lots of layers there are lots of tools and uh, you paid a, a, a good you know a good amount of money to have access to this material so make sure that you're getting the full benefit uh, once you've watched those three there are three videos in the getting started uh, with mind tap section and two videos under the course readiness section once you've watched those and by the way they're short but once you've watched those go ahead and take a look at um, the chapter material for week one uh, again for week one you are expected to complete the chapter quizzes on Genzabar and mind tap so uh, the with Genzabar you have the opportunity to take your quizzes twice right and only the highest grade will stick so if you take the quiz once and you don't like your performance you can take it again now I will say that I think repetition builds skills so that if you take it and let's say that you score 100 well good for you uh, I'd recommend that you go ahead and take that quiz again right maybe not immediately but at some point uh, during the week take that quiz again uh, and and see how you do uh, the only the highest grade uh, sticks and uh, the questions are being drawn from a, a test bank so you won't be receiving uh, the same questions you might have one or two that are the same but but you should have a different quiz experience uh, I think it's important that as you try to master this material you uh, use as many uh, resources as you can taking multiple quizzes again in my opinion uh, exposes you to new material and therefore builds better skills so this week read chapters one and two in the textbook one and two and complete the chapter quizzes also introduce yourself in the discussion forum uh, that's all we have to do this week in the discussion forum is just uh, a I've got a few questions posted in there so that I get to know you and your classmates get to know you a little better so continuing with the mind tap theme once you uh, have um, logged on to Genzabar I'm gonna have a link posted there it's in the blue highlight uh, that I've, I've got on this slide it will take you to a uh, web page that has the uh, that screenshot that I've, I'm showing to the right it, you will see that same page and I've got the uh, new student question mark create student account option highlighted and that's where you need to go if you will need to create a new student account uh, there is our course key and again I'm going to post this information in Genzabar so you don't need to try to copy it from here but uh, that's our course key and that is how you will uh, uh, be able to join our classroom uh, through the Cengage tool now a couple of points here number one your uh, uh, North Carolina Wesleyan student email account is your official email account for the college that means that for this class that's the only account that you can use to correspond with me and or create this account the tool MindTap is set up such that only your student ID which is your student email will be allowed to uniquely identify you as you create your account 
the what that does is uh, it does eliminates any confusion on my part uh, when I go into the tool to see who you are. Uh, if your uh, student ID is you know my mine for example would be something like R Kazaya uh, at uh, ncwc.edu. Uh, if you if yours was the same format but you decided to register MindTap with a private email account. Uh, and maybe that is Go Heels uh, or some other non-obvious you know, name, then I might lose you, and you might not get credit for the work that you're doing inside the tool. And you certainly don't want that to happen. So for that reason, uh, you will be uh, required when you create your account to use your student ID. If, if you use a private email address, when you go to use my course key, it will not recognize you. So if you have any questions on this, please let me know. But uh, yeah, the, the, the simple answer is please go ahead and use your official North Carolina Wesleyan student ID, which is your email address, as your account, uh, and that will that eliminate any problems going forward. Once you have created MindTap, and you've accessed the, the, uh, the material, this is what you'll see. So over on the right, you'll see getting started with MindTap. You notice it says three activities and course readiness resources also has three activities. Uh, the first one has three uh, short videos. The second one has two short videos and a PDF. So this will enhance your user experience greatly as you start to, to use MindTap pretty regularly over the next eight weeks. And so I would spend some time now uh, this week getting to know this tool. Uh, it will help you navigate it, obviously, but, but also help you with um, uh, you know, uh, maximizing the resources. Uh, for example, you have a narrator uh, option within this tool that will read your texts to you. You have flashcard options. Uh, it, it really is a very comprehensive tool. So take the time to explore. Uh, again, you paid big bucks for this particular resource, make sure that you maximize that fully. So with that, I think that's a good quick introduction. Uh, should you have any questions, please by all means send me an email. Uh, that is in fact the best way to contact me. I will uh, check emails you know, several times through the, uh, through the course of a normal work day. Can't say that I'll be quite as diligent on the weekends. Uh, I am, of course, available for a phone conference anytime you should like one. Again, just send me an email and I'll be happy to set something up with you. Uh, closing notes, I, I think that this class uh, is a lot of fun, uh, especially if you have an interest in hardware. Uh, the, I would recommend, if it's possible, that you purchase some hardware that you could tear down and build. Uh, that's where A plus got its uh, start. After all, is having hands on with uh, with hardware. Uh, there are a number of places you can go to get cheap computer hardware, so that uh, again that you can take a look at some of the components that we'll see pictures of in this class. But there's a huge difference between seeing the, the, a picture of a motherboard and a CPU and actually holding it in your hand and and taking it apart. So again, if you are able and can build a, you know, buy a couple of computers. Again, you can find them anywhere from, you know, Craigslist is a good example. Uh, the state of North Carolina has a surplus site here in Raleigh, which they frequently uh, sell old uh, computer equipment. Some of it's not so old, but they sell, you know, computer equipment that they need to get rid of. So there are inexpensive ways to go about building your own home lab. So with that, I'll go ahead and close. Good luck this first week. I'll be posting videos regularly as we move through this material, and I'm looking forward to getting started. I hope you are too. Have a good first day.